Good morning, prayer team. Happy Friday to each of you. Thank you for praying with us all week long. And thank you for joining me this morning for this uh, pre-recorded devotion uh, as we are out of town at a conference. So thank you for uh, being a part of this in our absence. If you have a prayer need today, please post it in the comments. Uh, also, um, your uh, praise reports. We would appreciate hearing those as well. I'm reading to you this morning from Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. I don't know if you've ever watched the sport of competitive rowing. Uh, I've never really watched it except for maybe a few times seeing it as an Olympic event uh, over the years. But it's a very interesting sport, and it is very draining to those involved, both mentally and physically. Uh, the work is very taxing and yet uh, rewards effort. Winning teams um, seek swing. Now, this is a term that would mean something to that person involved in that sport of rowing. It means nothing to us, at least not in this sense. But it's a term for the fleeting moment when all men or women in a boat are rowing as one. That's what they're trying to achieve. The harmony of rowing without loss of efficiency, which means they are rowing in perfect unison. As the people of God, we seek this harmony. We want to work together as one. After all, we are members one of another in God. And this truth instructs us and motivates us to cooperate with one another in the work of the Lord. Uh, sharing truth with the world requires us to remain unified in our mission. If we find ourselves rowing against one another, we will never accomplish much of anything. But even trying to row together, we often do not achieve that perfect harmony the Apostle Paul encouraged the Philippian church to have one mind, to strive together for the faith of the gospel, Philippians 1 and 27, to work and dwell in unity with God and with one another. That is the definition of cooperation. And yes, we fall short of this unity without God's help. Left to ourselves, uh, we will always quarrel and fight. There will always be strife and division as long as flesh is making the decisions. But Paul entreated his fellow laborers to be of the same mind in the Lord. Uh, two women that he was writing to and writing about in Philippians 4 and 2 labored with Paul for the work of Christ and yet it appears that uh, they had a disagreement with each other. Paul warned that this should not be. Christians are to look beyond differences and cooperate in the work of the Lord. He encouraged the efficient church to endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Paul pleaded continually for unity among the saints, which must mean that it's something that does not naturally uh, happen. We have to work toward it. Jesus prayed for unity among his people and pray that our unity would be very, very strong. A Christian cooperation is a testimony to the world, a witness to the power of God uh, overcoming our selfish desires. When the world sees our cooperation and our unity, they learn about the love of God through that. So I wonder what they learn when they see a lack of unity when they see division, when they see strife, then they see the work of the very enemy of our souls. It is true that this term swing will not happen every time we work together. We won't always harmonize and get into the smooth rhythm that we truly desire, but that should always be our aim. It should always be our goal to work side by side with others, with other Christians in perfect unity to exhibit the unity that we have as members of one another in Christ Jesus. We must also cooperate 
with God's word, with his spirit. He is working in us. He is working through us. Our task is to participate in the work that he is doing. A scripture is the instrument that is used to shape, mold, direct, and train us. God's word converts the soul, makes wise the simple, rejoices the heart, and enlightens the eye. Psalm 19, verse 7 and 8. There is no greater work in which to cooperate than growing in the Lord. And so let's strive for that swing. Let's strive for perfect harmony in, in our church services, in our prayer gatherings. And uh, it, it's a very, it has to be a difficult thing for us as humans because we know that um, there was a prayer meeting at the very beginning of the book of Acts that went on for several days. But the Bible says that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And then suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Amen. The, the power of God was poured out upon them uh, for the very first time at the opening of this dispensation that we're living at the tail end of now, at the very uh, end of days. Uh, God is still with his church today, but we must still be striving for that perfect unity and harmony that he could use us to turn our world upside down just like they did in their day. Well, we pray that together, that God would just draw us together in unity, uh, that we would see a, a greater measure of his spirit being poured out uh, in our communities. Um, wherever that we're gathering at this weekend, we need a move of God more than we need anything else, more than we need good oratory from the preacher, more than we need uh, good singing from the worship team, uh, more than we need beautiful facilities. We need a move of God, and that comes when God's people get in one mind and in one accord. Lord Jesus, we pray today that as we come together exalting you, that you would just draw our hearts and minds together in a greater degree of unity than we have experienced before. Let us be like-minded as Paul uh, desired. Let us, Lord, labor together and fulfill your will today as we bring these needs to you today, those who are sick in body, those who are discouraged perhaps, those who are in the midst of a severe trial of life right now. We pray, God, that they would feel us pulling together with them. They would feel uh, less of the load today because someone is praying for them. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you know every need that our prayer team is concerned about today. You see each need, Lord, that that families are dealing with right now, the dysfunction, the brokenness, the addiction, Lord, the need for deliverance that's in so many, uh, so many households today. We pray for your help in Jesus' name. We believe for miraculous healing. We believe today, God, that signs and wonders are going to be reported among your people as a result of unified prayer. In the name of Jesus, use me today, Lord. Help me, God, to unite with my brothers and sisters and to see your will done in earth even as it is in heaven. Lord, we give you the thanks, Lord. Even the needs that we don't know the details of today, there's nothing that's escaped your attention. It's with your stripes that we're healed today. It's your blood that covers us all today. And we thank you, Lord, for making uh, our healing, our victory possible today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Have a great weekend, everybody. Please pray for us uh, traveling home um, either this evening or tomorrow morning uh, that God will protect us and uh, be praying for our church services here over the weekend. And we'll be doing the same for you. And we look forward to joining together again on Monday morning right here on Facebook, 7.45 a.m. I hope that you can join us.